you guys doing today? Welcome to another episode of On The Line. My name is Anthony Ganji. I'm your host. Some may recognize me as a show from a show called Tear Talk, which is great. Some as a correctional advocate, hopefully both. Um, but with that said, today I want to focus a little bit more on inmate manipulation. A little bit complicated, this topic, because I know what I want to say. It's in my head. I'm just hoping I'm able to express it. I'm hoping I'm able to manifest the words that I need to kind of paint the picture that I have in my head. But I want to talk about downing of the duck or downing of a duck. Now, if you're in the corrections profession, you should know what this phrase means. And you should be familiar with the book written called Games Criminals Play. It was written by Diane Boston Bud Allen. Very good book, a must read for all correctional professionals. The reason why the book is a must read is because it focuses on the process of manipulation. You know, when I teach inmate manipulation, I always tell people that you can't just focus on the outcome. Because at that point, it's kind of too late. You have to focus on the process because that's where prevention takes place. That's where you're able to prevent because technically the way for the outcome, like I said, it could be too late and God knows what the end result could be. Now, for downing of a duck, it's this leverage that's created on this individual who they didn't have an intent to do anything wrong, but the inmates able to sway them a little bit and the process create leverage that can always be employed in case the the staff member decides to be resistant at a point. That's why the inmate starts collecting that leverage. That leverage can come in many forms, but for the downing of a duck scenario, it's physical leverage that starts with a pen and then works its way to a uniform. And what I mean by the leverage is basically the inmate gets a hold of something that they shouldn't have that's very small, nothing major, but then eventually they build it to something major. And if at any point the officer realizes I'm doing something wrong, that leverage could be employed to say, hey, well, you gave me this, this, and this, and this, so you better do what I need or else I'm gonna turn you in. And we'll explain that a little bit more. But again, that's the creative leverage, that's the process that's taking place before the official outcome. And again, it's the process we wanna take focus on. That's what we're gonna have this dialogue on right now. So I would like to think in our environment that we all get to police each other and that we should be open for that. You know, if an officer came up to me or a fellow staff member came up and said, hey, I think you're too involved with this inmate, I should be open to listen to that because I need to see what they see. I need to understand what they see. And I shouldn't be quick to be defensive or resistant on that. I need to be open. But when you have somebody that is starting to stray to the left, again, the game is slow and subtle, so they may not realize that they're doing that because it's like little small steps. And let me explain something real quick. When I talk about small steps, is the inmates asking for little favors, rather ambiguous at first, little baby steps. So you don't realize how far you're going or how far you're moving because it's slow and subtle. So to kind of spell it out a little bit, let's say that I'm on step six and an officer says, hey, Gange, what you're doing is wrong. I may not think it's that wrong because I'm only going to look back at step five and say, well, that can't be that big of a deal because step five was okay in my mind. And step six is just a baby step. What I should be doing is looking at step six and then comparing it to step one to see how far I leaped. You know, baby steps eventually become a leap. You keep moving forward. And problem is if you don't catch that person when the game has started it's called cognitive dissonance they're going to wind up convincing themselves that the new behavior that they're committing themselves to goes along with their new belief if that makes any sense so basically what happens here is that they wind up committing these behaviors and then eventually they start justifying those behaviors so now if i approach the individual at step six they've already convinced themselves that well Step six can't be wrong because five was correct, four was correct, three was correct, two was correct, one was correct. So now it's a lot harder for me to pull them back because now they're going to have to look back at each step prior and say, well, holy shit, if six was wrong, five was wrong, four was wrong, three was wrong, two was wrong. Oh my God, one was wrong. And they're not going to go that far back. So at that point, they've justified their position. And now if I approach them too late, that may only reinforce that connection with that. It may just prove that they're right, that they didn't cross the line. We as staff that can police, we may not see surface what the issue is. We may feel it. Like something doesn't seem right. They're too close. They're always talking. I don't know. I want to approach them because my gut tells me something's wrong, but I'm afraid that I'm wrong. And then what's going to happen is when I go to approach them, there's going to be a divide now between me and that individual. Okay. But what's, what about if you're right? The other consequence is going to be that if you don't approach them and you're right, they're going to bring in a contraband that that could pose a threat to the facility. So again, 
the the the, the lesser of consequences the fact that, okay so I, I got this person mad which they shouldn't be mad but let's say I got them mad that's the lesser consequence compared to the greater picture the greater picture is if I'm right if I'm right so for the officers that kind of are on the outside looking in if you think something's wrong take the officer aside or take the staff member aside and talk to them tell them what you see you know hey I'm not coming at you but I think you guys are a little too close you know it's what I see just want to kind of give you the heads up and hopefully the cool thing is if they are doing something wrong they won't do it in front of you because you brought that concern to them but hopefully the staff member does listen to you hopefully some cases they won't and maybe there will be that bit of a resistance but again the end game so with that said and just to go ahead and talk about the leverage so again inmates when they play this game they look for leverage and the leverage will eventually be employed once they need it once the officer or the staff member may realize oh maybe i am doing something wrong i don't want to do this anymore and all of a sudden the inmate goes we mean i want to do it well guess what you're going to have to because let me tell you the things you've given me already that you thought was rather ambiguous that actually now i'm going to employ so when that happens because let's say you have an officer that did or a staff member that did come in for good intent didn't want to do anything wrong and all of a sudden they get caught up in this game and the inmates get this leverage and all of a sudden the officer's like well wait a second maybe something doesn't feel right and you know we're human we could fall for a game sad to say we got to be on our toes but it could happen how you react once you know it's a game is where you're going to get my respect or you're going to lose my respect so now when I start to realize, let's say I think, well, maybe I did do something wrong. And when the inmate asks me for something that's a leap. Now, mind you, the inmates are going to go for the baby steps because they don't stand out. They're very, they're going to be very particular as to when they're going to ask you to take that leap. Because that leap means there's no turning back now. Once I ask you for this, you know what my intent is. And there's no turning back. There's no turning back. So when they ask for that leap, that means game is ready to go. It's on. So let's say it gets to that point where you're caught up and the inmate asks you for something. Now, in this scenario, it's a uniform. I need a uniform for you to bring in. I want to sneak out. I say, well, wait a second. Whoa, 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 hold on. What What do you mean a uniform? And the inmate goes, I need, I'm not bringing you a uniform. Are you, are you crazy? Well, the inmate's going to say, well, you're going to have to bring that uniform in because let me tell you something. This is the other stuff you've given me. So either way, you're in trouble now. I'm going to report you for these things. Now, again, where the officer or the staff member gets my respect is how they react to this threat from this inmate. There's two reactions. The first reaction would be the officer or staff member gets nervous because they're afraid to get turned in and they go ahead and bring what's needed, which causes a big risk to the facility. That's not going to get my respect. You're a threat now. I don't give a shit about you not knowing about the game prior. I, I don't care about that no more because now you do know. And now you know what you're doing is wrong and you're failing to correct it. Now, with that said, the other avenue would be what? Well, I may not have known what I was doing was wrong, but now I know it is. Because now I know what you're asking for. So, you're going to threaten me, I'm going to turn myself in. Because I'm not going to make my bad decisions affect others. Now the inmate has no leverage. And I'll give you respect because we're human. And maybe you did make some bad choices, but you do what you can so those choices don't affect other people. And I'll respect that a lot more than the person who fell for it and then failed to correct it once they knew what they were doing was wrong. But again, the reason why I put up this video is because I want you to look at the process of it all, not so much the outcome, but the process. That's where we have to get involved. That's where the, pre the prevention measures lie. But I'm very curious as to what you, what you think, what your response is. And uh, as always, I hope you enjoyed this episode. A lot more to come. The show's on the line. I'm your host, Anthony Ganji. As always, stay safe.